passion for life. We just supported his team that be bringing them life. Welcome to the Blessed Beat Show. My name is Marcus Sullivan. Special edition. This one fell in my lap. Got a, a MVP in the building. <laughs> A basketball icon in the building. Basketball great, Miss Cynthia Cooper. How you doing? I'm doing super wonderful. I'm uh, I'm doing great. It's a little hot, a little humid, but you know me, I always keep it cool. Yeah, uh, Houston, that's what, that's what happened this time around in the, uh, this year. Around this time of the year, it gets extremely hot. You know what? I don't mind that because I'm constantly working out, working out, mm -hmm. and I go outside. I get a really nice sweat. It's so rewarding yeah. to go for a run in Houston because when you're finished with that run, yeah. you're drenched. We were just talking before the interview, and you said you still work out every day. I work out every day. Yes. Wow. And so the athlete is still in you. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to keep it, keep keep yourself presentable. Yeah. Um, you got to stay healthy. Right. Um, so between eating properly and working out every day, you know, I actually am passionate about working out. So it's not something that I force, I have to force myself to do. Wow. Um, and so I do a full body workout pretty much every day. And because of that, I sometimes take a couple of days off. Let's get into who you are, and then get into why this city loves and respects you so much. Um, Cynthia Cooper on the Bless B Show. Talk about you growing up as a child, how you become that athlete. Well, you know, growing up, uh, I, I did everything outdoors. Mm -hmm. So uh, we played hide and go seek. We played mm -hmm. tag. We played, um, you know, just tons of games outdoors that just keep you active. Right. Um, you know, growing up in Watts, I didn't have a lot of examples of what I should do. Okay. Um, didn't have a lot of role models telling me where where I should go. I had plenty of examples of what I should not do and what nice. I should not get involved in. And, you know, have a strong God-fearing mom who, who wanted to lead me in that in the right direction. And so I got involved with track and field first. Mm. So I ran track around the 400 meters. I'm a 400 meter state champion yeah, myself, man. but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What you run? 53? I ran 52. I'm just saying. I no, was I'm, a 47, yeah, but go I'm ahead. Joking, you got I'm it. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, so track was my first real sport. Uh -huh. um, but then I started playing basketball when I was around 15 years old. Nice. And um, I loved it. When did you, when'd you realize this is going to be your thing. I didn't, I don't know that I realized it. You know, I started playing sports for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. I started playing sports because I knew we were poor and right. we didn't have enough money to put me, me through college. And I knew that sports could get me a scholarship. Okay. That would take the pressure off my mom to try to pay for college. So that, that was my goal. When I started playing basketball, I was like, oh, I love this. Yeah. I love this sport. Yeah. I, it's so wonderfully complicated, right? right? So you never arrive. Right. You're constantly striving to be the best, to be great. Um, and that's just a process. And I, and I enjoyed that process. But also, I think along the line, basketball gave me confidence. Growing up in Watts, was it was women's bad? Were you playing with everybody growing up? Well, when I grew up, I played with guys okay. because they were the only ones playing. Mm -hmm. And that if you're trying to find a game on the weekend, a game here, I only the guys are holding the, the, the games. But guys initially didn't really let me play. They didn't want me to play. One, because I was just starting out. And two, because I was a girl. Right. I mean, you're a girl. You, you, you're not, you, you're going to make us lose. And you know, right. when you play playing pickup, you lose one game. You might not get back out on the court at all. Right. At all, right. right? You might as well get your drink and start heckling everyone else. Yeah. Right. So um, that really taught me how to, the importance of winning. Right. Okay. I want to win right now. Yeah. I don't want to win in and a game because I don't want to get off this court until I'm ready right. to get off the court. So it really instilled a lot of discipline in me. Brothers and sisters? I have, uh, God, there's a ton of us. Okay. Uh, so there, I have seven siblings. Okay. Right. One passed away. So um, I have two brothers. Yeah. One older, one younger. Four sisters, two older, two younger. Did you compete with them growing up? No, because you know me, I'm on another level. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, you no, know, I think I competed with everyone. You know, it was, you know, it, for me, Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be great. I wanted to be the best. And I wanted to be the best at everything. Okay. Now, whether it be in class, whether it be on the basketball court, track and field, playing tag, hide and go seek. Right. Um, and like and that. so, you know, I just wanted to win. Like okay. and, and and so it was funny because everyone wants to challenge you, right? And yeah. so I don't care. You can be in a wheelchair, you can be on crutches, it's you going can down. Yeah, it's going down. It is. All right. So fast forward, you get to high school. And when at what moment did you realize, man, this is going to pay for college? This is going to be my career. 
I think I realized it when we won our high school state championship. Okay. Because um, I wasn't highly recruited. Everyone didn't come to see Cynthia Cooper play. Right. Uh, but we won the city championship, which then allowed us to go up north, which was my first time. Up north is like o- Oakland. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, it was my first time on an airplane. <laughs> and so I was like, yo, this could be an opportunity yeah. to further my education, to get a scholarship. You know, I, I did receive some letters for track and field, but mm-hmm. only really two for basketball. Wow. And that was USC and UCLA. All right. And you went to SC. Went to SC. All right. So you saw SC because, you know what, somebody else, when I said I had this interview, they said, man, ask her because they swear up and down love and basketball was about your life. That's what I, I was. Yeah, so uh, love and basketball without the payment of royalties is very, very, yeah. very yeah. close to my my actual story because I did go play in Italy. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I didn't get married to an NBA guy. Okay. And 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 have a baby, but yeah. everything else happened. All right, so obviously you are a star at SC, and back then, take us back. When basketball was supposed to be over, after we graduated and after all of this, what was women doing? I mean... Yeah, you know, I got to correct you on one small detail. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wasn't a star at SC. You're a star. I thought I was. Okay. In my mind, I was. But truth be told, it was Cheryl Miller Mm -hmm. and the McGee twins. Yeah. It was their team. They were the stars. Mm -hmm. And I actually came off the bench. Mm Mm-hmm. And then coming off the bench, I learned some more. Yeah. You know, I learned other things that helped to to really strengthen my yeah. position. Look, I might have came off the bench, but in my mind, I was the best. So, like you said, you when you when you playing on the block, pickup games, you were playing with the guys. But then by the time this became like the sport for you, you playing when well, you wasn't dominating the women at that point. I wasn't dominating the women. I was dominating the guys. Wow. So when I started playing with guys, they just taught me so much. They right. taught me how to be more dynamic, how to be crafty, and okay. how to be creative going to the basket, how to finish with contact. Absolutely. They're faster. They were, they're going to be physical with you to see if you can take it. And then they taught me how to finish. Yeah. Because guys don't want girls just taking shots. Guys want girls making baskets. Absolutely. That's what win games. Absolutely. And then the other thing, the other piece of that that it taught me is how to get everybody else around you involved. Yeah. Because they also don't feel like women should be on that court just shooting. Shoot, yeah. They want they want it. They want them to pass. They want to facilitate. They Absolutely. want you to facilitate a pass. So it really helped me balance my game. But yeah, I play when I started playing with girls, you know, no offense to anybody, yeah. I was like, this is easy money. <laughs> this is yeah. easy money. Because yeah. I've been playing with guys my entire life. Yeah. So I was like, oh wait, I gotta go around you. Got you. All right, so SC is over. It's a wrap, right? You want to continue to play, you gotta go overseas. Yep. Take us to that moment where you said, man, I have to go across the water to continue to do this thing that I love. Well, I will tell you that it's a, it's a moment, right? Because remember, I'm a kid from Watts. Mm-hmm. And I'd barely been out of California, let alone the the going overseas to play in another country. My adesso yo paro italiano. Mm. Yo yo to lipi dieci anni. You better work and, it. So I speak fluent Italian wow. because I, I went over and, and at SC, the one thing that SC gave me besides obviously a couple national championships, mm-hmm. but it gave me the, the confidence mm-hmm. and basketball gave me the confidence that I could really go anywhere yeah. and be great. Yeah. Right, and so the only opportunity was to go overseas, but they weren't paying a lot of money, and they didn't really want me. Wow! Right, they wanted some other kids, so I went over to Spain my first year, okay, and I averaged forty five points. Then I, I went to to Italy the next year because okay. you know hey, who's this kid yeah. scoring all these points? I went to Italy, I averaged forty points my first yeah. year in Italy because I had a chip on my shoulder. Right. And I wanted to prove to everyone that I was worth the investment. Right? Were you treated like a star over there? I wasn't treated like a star until I started putting up numbers. Yeah. And so then, yeah, you're treated like a star, but not our, not America's version, right. a version of a star. But you, you're, you're treated like you matter. Mm. Right. So you're treated like you matter. And, and in return, you give them what, you know, what they're looking for. They respected women's hoops way yes. back then. Yes. And this is pre-WNBA because it wasn't really anything. Right. Crack. Okay. So you're putting up numbers. Take us back to the time when, I guess, the phone rung or somebody put in your ear, hey, the there's this new league. Sure. Take us to that moment. So I'm in Italy and I hear about 
this league that's supposed to be starting in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, the NBA is supposed to be involved in it. Yeah. It's a professional league in America. So mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I want to play in that league. Yeah. So, you know, I got video together. I got stats together. Yeah. I got all of this together. I put it in a package, a FedEx package to send off to the WNBA. Office. You, no agent. This no, is you. This is all me. Wow. I was, I was hounding okay. our video people overseas. I was like, I really want to do this. My mom hadn't really seen me play pro. Yeah. My I lost touch with friends being overseas for so long. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to come back and perform in the WNBA, right? So I yeah. sent right before before I sent off the package, mm -hmm. I got on the phone to call the office of the WNBA. I got okay. on the phone, I called them, and um, and I was like, listen, my name is Cynthia Cooper. I play in, in Italy. Okay. Um, I'd love to have an opportunity to play in the WNBA. I'm going to shoot you guys a package of stats and video. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm, 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 I'm prayerful that you guys will, will allow me to at least get a tryout. Wow. So they go. At this point, their phones, email, like, well, everything had to be like everybody overseas, right. but college, everybody want to go. But when I when I called them, I, I I was they were like Cynthia Cooper from Italy. Yeah, yeah, you played at USC. I said, yeah, that that that's me. I'm 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 gonna send you this package. They're like, oh, you're in our top eight. You're gonna be playing in Houston. Like we we were looking Stop for you. It. So me on the phone, I was like, yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. But to them, I was like, uh, okay, well, my address is, <laughs> you know, okay. I called my mother right after. I was like, mommy, I'm playing in the WBA. She's yeah. like, where? I think Houston, but I'm, I'm playing in the WBA. Had you no. ever been to Houston at this point? At that point, you'll be shocked to know something. Go ahead. So initially, I didn't actually know I would be playing in Houston, but I was already living in Sugar Land. Shut up. I was already. So the team... They chose me, right? Yeah. But they didn't know I already I was already living here. Oh, guess guess favor right there. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know what? The other thing is this is this is the real dream, right? Okay. The WNBA is the real dream. Like to have your mom sitting in the, in the stands and yeah. watch you play, to have the fans chanting MVP, yeah. Yeah. like that's really your vision yeah. of playing pro ball, right? Yeah. And I had all of that in. Houston, like that's that's the dream. That's that's God saying, "Hey, here you go. Yeah. This is what you earned." Wow, you just tuning in. This is Cynthia Cooper, NBA. I'm calling her legend on the face to beat the blessed beat show. My name is Marcus Sullivan. Now you're touching into Houston. Yes, WNBA is starting. Yes, new league, all the hype around it. You got a squad together going into the first season. What was your thoughts? Well, my thought was I had a chip on my shoulder. I had something to prove. Yeah. I had to prove that because a lot of people don't know. I was 35 at the time. Okay. So I'm 35. They they don't, they're really just, they have me on the team in my mind because remember Cheryl Swoops was out the first year right. with her pregnancy. Right. right. So they, they don't really know. I don't believe they know what I can bring to the table. Right. So, so in your mind, head, this Swoops team, they just bringing you here because she's right. pregnant. That's right. But I know, I know one thing that they don't know. Okay. I'm about to show out. Yeah. Like, I'm about to show them what I've been doing overseas because the other thing is I felt so blessed yeah. for the opportunity to come back to America and play pro here. Yeah. I was going to take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. Right. And so my first year, I was like, look, they were thinking, hey, they might make 500. Yeah. I told Coach Chancellor, I was like, yo, I can do more. Yeah. Like, I can give you more. Yeah. Like, I know you guys don't know, but I can. How was the league back then? Was it? competitive or, or you dominate were they, were they as good as the women overseas what was the league the league was was competitive the okay. league was uh competitive and we got to remember a lot of those kids i had played against overseas right overseas oh. is probably a little more physical okay but the WNBA has always been more talented nice okay. and so you have to bring your a game every night in the WNBA. right over there, uh, you might take a day or so. Yeah. You know, you have a down game and you still out. Well, me. I still had 30 points. So, me and everybody else probably had 15. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, I will say that the WNBA has always had a boatload of talent. Okay. Fast forward. Championship. End of the first season. Yeah. Inaugural season. Yep. One so, game left. We were about to win it all. 3 2 one Confetti, you win it. Blessed, you know, because there's nothing like being the first, mm. right? So there's nothing like knowing the uphill battle, getting ready to send that FedEx package off, yeah. getting ready to, you know, all of the question marks, can you perform? Who are you? Where have you been for, for 10 years? Yeah. You know, all of those questions are answered 
as the confetti is falling down and you realize that you won the first ever, ever yeah. WNBA championship. And I remember the night before, Kim Parrott was just so nervous. Yeah. She was so nervous. She was like, I've never won a championship before. Yeah. I looked at her. I said, you're going to win one tomorrow. Wow. You're going to win one tomorrow. Immediately after that, you became the face of the WNBA. You became, you were the Michael Jordan of the WNBA. How did life change for you? Well, I don't know that life changed for me as much as just everyone realizing and acknowledging, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things that I brought to the basketball court. But, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I've always, whether I was overseas playing in Italy, whether I was at Lock High School winning the state championship, at USC winning two national championships, I've always been Cynthia Cooper from the inner city. And I but never... You're a celebrity now. Well, celebrity per se, you yeah. know, celebrity is a mindset, mm, right? It's, it's a mentality and right. I didn't have that mentality. So wow. I still would go to places like Dave and Buster's and, you know, whenever I was in public, yeah. I knew that I belonged to the public, gotcha. right? If I wanted some privacy or whatever, I stay at home. Yeah. You know, one of the great moments of my entire, entire career, one of the great memories okay. is just sitting at home after we won our championships. Yeah. Two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. And 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 watching the highlights on television with yeah. my mother. Wow. While everybody was out partying and yeah. everybody's having a good time, I was at home watching the highlights with my mother. Like, yeah. yo, look, I, hey, that was a nice move. Yeah. It, it was just a it's just a fun, fond memory. On, on the face to be so on the blessed be show, Cynthia Cooper, I wouldn't be a good host if I didn't ask. Talk about the relationship with Kim Parai. And that whole situation, because that took our whole city. Yeah. We all felt that. Well, I mean, Kim was just so special. She was special to the city. She was yeah. special to the team. She was a special person, special to her family. I don't think anyone knew how special she was until she got sick. Yeah. And before that, remember, Kim Parra came out of the tryout. She wow. wasn't selected or drafted. Yeah. We, ha we, we held an open tryout, and she was the only player to come out of that tryout. Mm -hmm. and, and then look how important and significant she was for our team. So to, to lose Kim Parat was devastating. Yeah. And I remember her, she passed away a couple of days before we started the playoffs that third season. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was devastating. And, and for once, you know, in my mind, in my spirit, there, yeah. was, there was something more important than basketball. Yeah. Um, and we had every every reason, every excuse to not succeed that year. I mean, mm. everybody was already counting us out. There's no way right. they could overcome this emotional right. moment uh, with the passing of their teammate. Now, my mom had passed six months before that. Wow. So February, my mom passed. Kim passes in August. And I'm just like, this is too much. Wow. And so I, I wanted to. I wanted to change a negative situation into something positive, and I decided to pay a tribute. Yeah. Let me pay a tribute tribute to these two people that were special in my life. Nice. That were special in my life. And the only way to do that is to be able to stand on the podium with Kim's jersey yeah. and point to where my mom used to watch her daughter perform out on the court. She used to her, her, to her seat. And, and it's just, you know, that's how, and that's how I've, I've always approached life. Mm -hmm. Just any obstacle that comes in front of me or anything that's trying to stop me from achieving my goals, I'm trying to change that negative energy mm -hmm. into something positive so I can use to overcome that obstacle. Very nice. All right, so we said it, championships. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Four-time champion, MVP. When you got to the moment when you said, okay, putting these gym shoes up. Yeah. You've been hooping your whole life. Mm-hmm. You wake up in the morning, you say, man, I got to do something else. Talk about it. Well, it was time. Yeah. You know, it was time. My I, I, you got to listen to your body. Right. But you don't have regrets. At least I didn't have regrets. Okay. Because I knew I'd given my sport my all. Yeah. I'd taken advantage of every opportunity that God provided for me. Yeah. I didn't shortchange my teams. Mm -hmm. I didn't shortchange my city. Okay. I didn't shortchange my family and I didn't shortchange myself. So, right. So when it was time to hang, the, hang the shoes up, I was like, yo, I can do other things. Okay. I can do other things and I want to do other things. Basketball didn't define me. Mm. I defined basketball. Very nice. You got kids now, right? I have boy, girl twins. They know who their mom is. 
Oh, you just mama. I, I need some new, I need a new Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just mom. Okay. I, I'm really just mom. I, I think initially it, they almost got annoyed because, yeah. you know, your kids want all your undivided attention. Absolutely, yeah. And once again, when I'm in public, I'm the public, yeah. right? And they didn't really understand that initially. They understand it more now that they're older, they're 16, um, but I'm mom to them. Yeah. So they play basketball, but I don't coach them. Gosh, you don't. Is it a lot of pressure on them, especially the daughter? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, there's pressure. But but it was their choice. They played tennis, and I wanted them to stay in tennis. Mm-hmm. You know, they decided to play basketball. They want to play basketball, no problem. And if they ask me, I'll coach them. I'll give them my in-and-out move. I'll give them a runner off the glass. I'm going to give them all of that. You giving them the hard foul? Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> you, you know what? You you need that. Right. You, you need that type of physicality. All right. All right. You said coaching. Let's talk about your coaching. Yeah. Right? Um, you're a staple in our community. You're forever going to be the GOAT here, right? You coach, uh, did you coach, you coach at SC, you coach at PV. When you said, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching now, how's your mindset changed? Like, because like people ask me, I'm an ex-football player. Some people say, you want to go coach? And I'm like, nah, cause I'm going to be like, yo, I still got it. Right. I not do. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Did I say that out loud? I thought I just thought that. Yeah, um, you still get no, it. Um, no, so so for me, coaching is about teaching. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when you coach, you have to remember, in the WNBA, I was 35 playing before I refined my game. I'd worked on a few things, worked out the kinks. Yeah. But I wasn't always that way. Yeah. So at 17, 18, you know, I was still learning. Okay. And that's how I approach coaching. Yeah. I'm all about teaching. Yeah. I'm all about skills. I'm not just going to show you a shot. I'm going to show you how to clear a path to the basket. Nice. I'm not going to just show you a layup. I'm going to show you how to absorb the contact and still finish, uh, finish that layup. So I'm more about even, and it doesn't matter how far back in the skill I have to go in order to teach you. Yeah. It just matters that wherever you are, I meet you there yeah. and take you where you need to go. Let's talk about the WNBA today. And then we'll get into your camp. Cause I gotta, I want to know about this camp. Um, what's the first, what's the biggest difference? And outside of like, I'm, I'm going to say it on a skill set level of the WNBA ball players and NBA ball players. Well, skill level. Is, yeah. You know, in the NBA, you have a lot of athleticism. Yeah. You do have some players that are skilled. Yeah. I mean, when you look at Steph Curry, that's skill. Right. You know, he doesn't necessarily have the size, right. the build. He's not incredibly, right. incredibly athletic. But he has a skill set that, one, evens the playing field. But because he's perfected it, yeah. now he's above the rest. Right. And so right. really the difference between NBA and WNBA is the skill set. Right. Because women, um, the majority of women play under under the rim. Right. Right. Then they have to find creative ways of getting to the basket. Right. They have to fine tune their ball handling skills. They can't have a, 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 a weak or... Uh, different jumper yeah. they have to have they have to perfect the fundamental of a jumper can you see a sharpshooter in the WNBA like a Steph Curry oh I mean there are plenty of them yeah but for 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 me most women mm-hmm. in the WNBA and I think this is huge you know in the NBA everybody's a, a specialist yeah this is what they do right right in a WNBA players are more balanced they can do it all. Yeah. You have I just saw a kid, uh, the kid from the wings, Dallas Wings, six eight kid, mm. had fifty points in a game. And I looked at her highlights and she's shooting threes. Wow. So the skill set of women, uh, I, I think is more balanced than that of NBA players. What do you think the WNBA um is going from here? Is it, it... Yeah, I think I think the next phase has to be Expansion, because right now the WNBA is overflowing with talent. Yeah. So now little girls are, are dreaming of playing professional basketball in America. Yeah. And then they're preparing themselves earlier. Yeah. Right. So now middle school, uh, you have AAU. So middle school, high school, yeah. college in their minds, they're going to be a pro player in America. Yeah. Right. And so they're preparing sooner. So there's a, a, a an abundance yeah. of talent. In the WNBA. Now I'm looking for the WNBA to expand again. Very nice. Expand. You, said, you said the word preparing. I got the gold in the building on the Face the Beast show, on the Blessed Beast show. Cynthia Cooper. She's talking about preparing. You got a camp. Yeah. Let's talk about this camp. Well, the Hall of Fame Basketball Skills Camp uh, will be held 
August 4th mm-hmm. and 5th out at uh, the Crossover Athletics. Nice. And then 6th and 7th out at Humble at the gym. Um, um, my number one goal is to teach skill. Yeah. I want to send players to high school, send players to college, send players to the pros with the necessary skills to have longevity. Mm. Not just teach them how to shoot, yeah. not just go through ball handling drills, but take them through a drill that utilizes those ball handling skills to actually get to the basket, yeah. to create space to get your jumper off. Yeah. So I don't want to just teach them how to dribble. Right. I want to teach them how to use that dribble. Um, anybody joining in with you, helping you out on this day? Well, I have this kid that I that I coached. Her mm-hmm. name is Tanisha. She was a corner three point shooter. She was all right. Ah, she was all right. You know, <laughs> I couldn't move her out that corner either. I tried to move her around the court. You know, being a coach, trying to trying to get players better, she would not move out that corner. So you know yeah. me, I made a play where she shot it in the corner. Yeah. So at, at the end of the day, she's she's a fantastic leader. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she organizes me. Okay. And. And then she's hungry. Like one of one of my traits mm-hmm. has always been I'm hungry. I'm hungry for greatness. Yeah. I'm hungry to get better. Yeah. I want to be the best. And Tanisha has that same drive. Very nice. Well, what else can we expect? The competition level or, or age groups for the camp? Yeah, 10 to 17, mm-hmm. 60, 17. Um, I, I think what one thing that's going to make a difference other than the, our, our teaching yeah. is you know how when you're in algebra class or you're in an English class, your teacher teaches you a new skill or, right. you know, something new. Then they give you homework to go and practice that, gotcha. that they just taught you. Yeah. Well, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to give them something that they can go home with and still work on that skill, perfect mm. it yeah. so that it's fine tuned when it's time for the season. Absolutely. Let me ask you, I'm going to switch gears real quick. Um, let's take it back to last NFL season. You know, you had all of the players taking a knee and all of that. As an athlete, how'd you feel about that? Or if that thing was going on in your era, are you a part of that? Or yeah, I'm definitely a part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I think you can't. You know, as a, as a public and as a society, we've got to be very careful with with you know allowing players to uh, allow allowing people to to really explain and 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 just you know showcase what they believe in yeah. and just, you got to let them believe in something, something. stand for something. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and you can't have it both ways as a society. You can't say, Hey, you keep your mouth shut yeah. and you never say anything and you never take a position. And then when they do, you criticize. Absolutely. Right. So you can't have it both ways. You got to be like, listen, this is their platform. Yeah. So how many times have you heard, Hey, such and such didn't use his platform. Right. Now now when they use it for something they believe in, now everyone's up up in arms. Gotcha. So I probably would have set a time limit. Mm-hmm. You know, let's do it this this long. Gotcha. Right? right? So that way you have your voice, but then we keep the focus on where it should be. And that's our sport, our wonderful sport, right? But at the end of the day, everyone should have a voice. Yes. Got to go in the building, Cynthia Cooper. One more time, talk about the camp, uh, the who, what, when, where, and why. So the why is to teach skills. Okay. The who is the Hall of Fame basketball skills camp. The the and the where and and when will be out at the crossover athletics October uh, October August fourth and fifth, mm-hmm. and then August sixth and seventh will be out at the gym in Atascacito, the Look, Humble area. Yep, absolutely. Um, you're listening to the Face to Beat show. My name is Marcus Sullivan. How can we get in touch with you? Are you busy on social media? Oh yes, I am. I'm at C Cooper fourteen on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I have a really cute picture. I made sure it was cute before <laughs> I posted it. Anyway, um, I'm uh, all decade on Twitter, um, on Facebook, and then um, we have a website that you can go to C Cooper fourteen um, at C Cooper fourteen at dot com dot something com. like that see cooper14.com yeah that's what it is all um right. yeah you can go there and get all the information yeah i might have to go out there and then show you what i got show you what this crossover it's okay do. it's all right you can do that <laughs> I'm, I'm ready so i work out for those moments okay there it is <laughs> i'm at marcus sullivan live on the ig at marcus e sullivan on twitter you are listening to the face to be show i am in for michaela simone this is the face to be show on 93.7 the beat Jehovah's passion for life. We just supported his team that be bringing them life.